Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick Proto. We have got plenty to get to this morning between back to school, but first we are going to start off with now a tropical storm. Debbie, first alert weather day in effect. Tim, we'll start with you. All right. Well, we have a downgraded Debbie, which was a category one hurricane earlier this morning. They made landfall across the Gulf Coast of Florida around the Big Bend. Now we're starting to see rain get a little bit closer to some of our southern counties here, but we'll talk about the impacts, what we're going to be looking at more of the rain threat and some of that more significant significant rain starting to move in overnight through Tuesday, but that does include the entire viewing area. First alert weather day through at least Wednesday rain totals getting up there, maybe four to eight, depending on where you are. Now, a lot of our southeastern counties, we're looking at Barnwell, Bamberg, Allendale County with more of the higher rain totals and definitely towards the coastal areas of South Carolina, which at this point are really starting to get soaked. You can see some of the heavier bands starting to move on shore between Charleston to Beaufort, South Carolina riding I-95 down south. So winds are max sustained at 70. You can see some of that line of rain is just kind of moving into the Burke County area onto the north. It will overtake us, but that track starts taking a little bit more of a shift off to the east. But notice that jog and all the way till about Thursday, Friday, still as a tropical storm, Nick. So we're going to be monitoring the rain. We'll look at some impacts here when we close it out in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Tim. As we continue to track Debbie, we've got team coverage checking out preps across our area. Our Audrey Dick Herbert is checking in with city leaders as we get ready for potential impacts. Well, right now it feels pretty good outside, but we're expecting the weather to look completely different by tonight. So what is the city doing to prepare? What should you be doing to prepare? I reached out to the city of Augusta to see how we can be prepared for this potential storm that's coming our way and any precautions that we should be taking. And they'll give some advice for everyone as well. So stay tuned and we'll have more for you and the newscast this afternoon. Thanks, Audrey. And as Tim mentioned earlier, some of those southern eastern counties could see the most impact from Debbie. Our Sydney Hood is heading down to Swainsboro this morning to see how they're preparing. We're getting ready to head out to Swainsboro as they prep for the storm ahead. We're going to be talking with Emanuel County's EMA director in about an hour or so to talk about how they're prepping, what they're looking out for, and what they are telling residents. So be sure to look for this update as well as other updates all new tonight on News 12 at 11 o'clock. All right, thanks, Sydney. And with the first alert weather days, you can always scan this code on your screen. This will take you right to where you can download our first alert weather app. That's going to keep you up to date on everything that we know that we will pass along to you. Turn those push notifications on so you don't miss anything. Also today, several counties in the CSRA saying goodbye to summer and hello to a new school year. Richmond County Elementary Schools went back today. Tomorrow, K-8, through Magnet, Middle, and High School start the new year. This year, every student in Richmond County school system will get free breakfast and lunch under the community eligibility provision of the federal school meal program. There's going to be a new cell phone ban as well. No cell phones, smartwatches, other devices like that. You can check out how that's going to work on our website, WRDW.com. We were also over in Columbia County this morning. All students in the county starting their first day today. In case you didn't know, crews are finishing parking lot construction at both Lakeside and Evans High School. Superintendent Dr. Stephen Flint tells us the work at Lakeside will probably continue for most of the first semester. He says each high school will also have a parking lot monitor. Kids going to Westmont Elementary will meet at the Columbia County Performing Arts Center this week. They started today, too. The new campus on Oakley Perkle Road isn't ready yet because of construction delays. Starting at the Performing Arts Center wasn't the plan for families, but they told us at an open house yesterday they're doing what they can to make the best of it. I would rather them take the time that it needs to make sure that the school is done right and done safely and that my children return to a school that's not going to become a hazard to them. Dr. Flint said last week or Dr. Flint last week says weather played a role in the delays, but district leaders feel prepared and confident with the decision to move the students. He says a contractor told him they plan to apply for the certificate of occupancy sometime this week, and he says he plans to follow up with them each day. In the meantime, district leaders plan to have a grab and go breakfast and lunches ready for students. That's going to be free of charge. Plus, buses will take students to the pack and a car line will be there for drop off and pick up. Now, a few school districts are canceling classes for some days this week because of the storm. Bamberg County and Burke County schools are closed tomorrow. Jenkins County is going to be closed tomorrow and Wednesday. Bags of meals will be prepared for each student to take home with them. Burke County canceled after school activities that involved the buses because of the wind. That was what they did first before canceling class. We'll let you know on air and online if any other districts adjust their weeks as well. 
That's going to wrap up school talk here and all the news that we've got this morning. Let's send it back over to Tim for another check here at Debbie. Yeah, let's talk about the current watches that are in play. There's been a few adjustments, not so much in the way of the flood watch. That's going to continue. Counties along and south of I-20, that's where the flood watch is still in effect until Wednesday. You can see those uh, yellow boxes. That keeps the tornado threat a little bit more out of our area. That's good news right there. We don't really expect to see a severe weather impact here locally mainly just in the form of some rain and that heavy at times. But there has been a little bit of an update to the tropical alerts. Wrightsville was dropped out of that uh, tropical storm watch. Now there is a tropical storm warning in Emanuel County and the counties in blue outside of the viewing area. Going back to the severe weather risk, just a level one marginal risk through today and tonight for a few of those southeastern counties there outside the viewing area down towards Statesboro. And it looks like we're not really expecting to see that kind of stay in the region as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday. But more of that significant flooding risk getting up into the moderate to high categories going through Tuesday, early Wednesday. But there's still going to be the threat for some rainfall that continues all the way out towards the end of the week. Models are starting to hone in a little bit more towards that three, four inch range right around Augusta Aiken, but the higher totals are staying outside mainly in the southeast counties. We'll keep temperatures in the low to mid 80s.